What is up guys, it's time for Dylan back at it again with another crypto video. What is up guys, it's time for Dylan back at it again with another electronics tutorial. In today's video, we are continuing on with our Elegoo Uno R3, the most complete starter kit out there. We're going to be doing lesson number six. In today's video, what we're doing is we are going to learn how to generate sounds with an active buzzer. So in our last lesson, what we did was we built this pretty cool little circuit where we had an LED that was connected to our board. And of course, we had two switches or two buttons that when you pressed one, turned on the light, and when you press the other, turned off the light. It was pretty cool, most advanced thing we've done so far. Now we're just gonna take it one step further, introducing another component, a buzzer. So I'm super excited about this lesson. It looks like it's gonna be a little bit easier than the last lesson, because all we have is our buzzer, our Uno, and two wires. So without further ado, let's jump into today's video, starting with lesson number six. As always, first things first, Let's jump into our box and pull out our components. What we're gonna need is our R3, of course, the active buzzer, and two female to male wires. So female to male DuPont wires. So this is what the buzzer looks like. And the wires, boom, look like that. Okay, cool. So let's make sure we get the right wires, one black, one red, and jump into today's video. So let's jump into our box, get our components out as always. Boom, we're gonna need our R3, Boop. right here. Set that right here. So we'll get our cable, they're connected to this. See, we have the male end and the female end. So we'll set that right there. Let's get one red cable, or you know, yeah, we'll get one red cable. Boom, one red cable, set that right there. Now we just need to find our buzzer. So it appears as though the buzzer, it's going to be inside of our LED box, and it's going to be this one up here, the big, fat, round one. So we'll put that there. We'll put everything back in our box since we have all of our components, and we will put our box to the side. And of course, we will get started with our lesson. So let's take a look. Boom. So the electronic buzzers are DC powered and equipped with an integrated circuit. They're widely used in computers, printers, photocopies, alarms, electronics, or everything, basically. Buzzers can be categorized as active and passive. Turn the pins of two buzzers face up. The one with the green circuit board is a passive buzzer, while the other one with the closed black tape is an active one. So this one, as you can see, is enclosed. If we were to look at the other one, which I will just pull out really quick so you guys can see, has a little circuit board that is exposed. It says it's green, but that looks a little bit blue to me. I don't know, you guys be the judge. Let me know what you think. Anyway, I'm glad we grabbed the right one. So let's put everything back. The difference between the two is that an active buzzer has a built-in oscillating source. So it will generate a sound when electrified. A passive buzzer does not have such a source, so it will not tweet if DC signals are used. Instead, you need to use a square waves whose frequency is between 2K and 5K to drive it. The active buzzer is often more expensive than the passive one because of multiple built-in oscillating circuits. Makes sense. So this is what the schematic looks like. Looks like we have our buzzer right here. We have our ground cable right here, which is going to ground. And then we have our red jumper cable, which is going to D12. And a wiring diagram just to make it a little simpler. So let's get started with the wiring. Boom, we're gonna jump back over here and get started. So it looks like we are going into this side right here. You can see ground and 12, that's where we're going. So we want the ground to have the black cable. So the male end goes in the ground. And then the red side goes into 12. Very cool. And then of course, you just wanna make sure you get the correct terminals here. And as you can see, just like with our LEDs, we have one side that's a little bit longer than the other. Here, I'll put that white background right there so you can kind of see. 
So my guess is the long side is the positive side, the short side is the negative side. And of course we want the positive side to be connected to D12, so we want the positive side to be connected to the red. As you guys can see right here, positive is connected to D12, so positive, long side connected to D12. And then of course, negative side connected to the ground. There you go. You can set that down. You can actually plug this in and then take a look at the code. So jump you back over. Boop. Let's scroll down and see what it wants us to do with the code. So after wiring, please open the program in the code folder, lesson six, making sounds, upload the program. See lesson two for details about uploading the program if there are any errors. Okay, so just like last time, what we need to do is navigate to wherever you have your PDF. So if you downloaded the PDF with the CD, wherever you put that file, that's where the code is gonna be. If you happen to download it from the internet, like what I did, wherever you put that file, mine happens to be right here on the desktop. Bingo, bango, English code, lesson six, making sounds, active, and of course, it's the only file in there. We'll open that up, close our other Arduino IDE window. What's interesting is there's actually no explanation of the code. Interesting. So let's go ahead and press upload. Come back over here. Make sure to always go to port. Make sure you select the right Arduino board, boom, and then click upload. Uploading. There we go. So we got some sound coming out of this thing. Very cool. Okay, let's go ahead and stop this. What I'm gonna do is I am going to comment out all of this code so that it stops beeping. Now let's take a look at the code because there's actually no explanation of the code whatsoever in our instructions. So, taking a look at the code. Just like we've learned, we always have to define what pin we're gonna be using our device on. So pin 12 happens to be the exact same pin. If we come back to our view, you can see pin 12 is the same pin that we plugged our positive terminal into. So in the code, we have to tell our code the same thing, which we did at the top right here. Int buzzer, we can name this anything too, but it it's good practice to name whatever we're gonna component we're using, name that as the variable. So in this case, we're using buzzer because we're using a buzzer. 12 refers to the pin, boom. So then we go into the setup, pin mode, just like we did in the last one. Pin mode is going to tell our compiler, our, fun our program here, that we want to use which pin, pin 12, what is it doing? It's outputting, outputting what? Some electricity, some voltage. We need to send some electricity to this device to make it work. That's all we're doing in the setup. Now we're actually not calling on the digital write function which as you guys have seen, that is what will supply the voltage to the device. So if we come up here and we put our digital write function in our setup, what do you think is gonna happen? It's probably just gonna beep, keep the buzzer going. So let's test that. Boom, click run, come back to our other view. Just as predicted, it's just gonna keep that buzzer on. So let's get rid of that. Boom, upload, so it stops beeping, because that is very loud, and then come back here, very cool. So as we've seen, digital write, what it does is it has two parameters, one of which is the pin that we wanna send the voltage to. When the second parameter is high, what it's doing is it's sending electricity. When it's low, it's turning it off, very cool. So what we could technically do is copy this, I'm gonna set down the board, we're gonna copy this, we're gonna put it here. We're gonna copy one of these delay. Sound duration, what goes in here is just an integer value. In the case of our loop, we set the sound duration as 500, which is milliseconds, so half a second. 
And then when we go through these loops, we're kind of changing the delay to make it beep faster and faster and faster and faster and faster and faster until we get down here and we just have it beep, be constant beep. So if we come up here to the setup, we put the buzzer on and we delay for let's say 5,000 milliseconds and then we can turn it off without looping just so you guys can see how this actually works. Now if we run this, boop, come back to our view. One, two, three, four, five. Boom, there you go. What it did was, as we see in our code, it turned it on, waited five seconds, and then turned it off. So that's how these functions work right here. Let's get rid of that, come back in here, and explain how this code works. So what we're doing is at the beginning we're setting our sound duration, which is going to be used to pass into our delay. And essentially what we're doing is we're looping through how many times, we're starting with zero, we are going up to, not including 20, and we're gonna increase by one every time. So we're gonna go through this block of code 20 times. Use the if function to gradually shorten the interval sound. So if I is less than five, so for the first five iterations of this entire block of code, what it's gonna do is it's gonna come in here and it's gonna set the duration to half a second. So it's gonna skip this code as long as it is less than five. Once it gets greater than five, it'll skip this first block and then jump into here. It will do this block of code from five up to 10, not including 10. So five more times. And then once it has reached 10, it will jump into this last section of code. So for the first five beeps, it's going to be half a second apart. For the next five beeps, it's going to be about one third second apart or three over 10. Right, three tenths second apart. And then for this last one, it's going to be one tenth of a second apart for the last 10 beeps. All of the, all the if statements are doing is just setting this variable to a different number. Right? For the first five, it's the same number. For the next five, it changes it to 300. And then for the next 10, it changes it to 100. So that once it gets down to this next block of code, what it does is it actually turns on the buzzer. It delays for the amount of time that was set in these if statements, depending on what iteration of the for loop we're in. And then it will turn it off and then delay for that same amount of time until it goes back up to the top of the loop and it restarts. After it's done with all 20 iterations, what it's gonna do is it's just gonna play the sound on high, right? It's gonna play the buzzer, send high voltage or turn on the buzzer and delay for five seconds. So keeping the sound going for another five seconds. Very cool. So we could change this. We could change this code. How do you guys want to do this? I think what would be cool to do is if we just got rid of these if statements. And let's just do sound duration minus equals 10. So it's going to go through 20 times. So it will subtract 200 from sound duration. What I'll do is I'll take this variable and I'm going to put it up here. So I moved it from a local scope to a global scope, meaning when this line of code was inside of here, when it was right here, you can only use this variable inside of this loop, inside of this block of code. It's the only place it's available locally. When I move it up here, I'm able to use it in this code, in this code, and any other blocks of code or any other functions that I write, I'll be able to include sound duration in that scope. So in this case, the reason why I'm putting it up here is because I don't want it to reset every time it gets to the bottom of the loop and pops back up to the top. What I want it to do is start at 500, which it will because it's outside of this block. Every time it comes through here, it's gonna subtract. Sorry, let's make it 25. So 25 times 20, that's 500. So at the end, it should be at zero. So there should be no delay at the very end. So every time it runs through this block of code, what it's gonna do is it's gonna subtract 25 from the delay. So it starts at half a second, 
And every time it goes through, it gets a little quicker, a little quicker, a little quicker, until there is no delay at all. At the last iteration, there will be no delay. So at that point, what we're going to do is hop out of this block of code, come down here, keep the buzzer on for five seconds. Then what we're going to do is we are going to turn off the buzzer. delay for half a second and then we're gonna set the sound duration back to 500 so let's see if this works so what this should do is it should beep for half a second beep for a little bit less than half a second blah, 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 until there's no delay in between the beeps and it should keep it on for five whole seconds Turn off the buzzer, wait half a second, and then restart. So let's try. Boom, upload. <laughs> and then, delay, restart. So as you guys can see, it works. So I'm just gonna upload the code, commenting out, of course, all of the buzzing sounds. I just uploaded it without anything in here so that it stopped bu uh, bu buzzing. But that's all I have for you guys today. If you guys made it this far, shout out to you guys. I'm happy that you've made it this far in this tutorial series, lesson six. In the next lesson, we're gonna do passive buzzer. So it's gonna be just like this lesson, except it looks like we're gonna be able to actually change the hertz or the frequency or the pitch of the sound that is coming out of this. It looks like this is gonna be really cool. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. I don't know if that's the right frequency, but you get the point. Thank you guys for tuning in. You guys are awesome. Have a beautiful day, beautiful night, wherever you guys are. Dylan is out.